In order for a plant to be considered carnivorous, it has to be able to do three things. It has to attract the food, it has to capture the food, and it has to digest the food. And there are a lot of plants that do one or two of those things, but in order to be a carnivorous plant, it has to do all three. The main reason I got interested in them, I, I've worked for the Pre Harris County Precinct 4 Parks Department for 22 years now, and I used to work out at Jesse Jones Park and do a lot of reptile education, teaching schools and scouts and all kinds of people about snakes and turtles and lizards and all of that. But the teachers always asked me, you know, you do such a wonderful job with teaching people about animals, how do we get the kids interested in plants? And I gave it a bit, little bit of thought and, and it became very obvious that the, the real tool to use was carnivorous plants. It's engaging, it is. Uh, you know, something where you have a plant that turns the tables on the animal world, that's just captivating for, well, young and old alike, but especially with the, the kids. They, they just really love that idea of plants that can eat animals. It's, it's fascinating to them. I, I've always been, liked plants, but I had paid no attention to carnivores. We've all heard of Venus flytraps, but had no idea what else there was. Um, but just uh, sharing the interest for love of nature and plants got me involved. There's, there are myths about the, the man-eating plant of Madagascar or the man-eating plant of Borneo. And people tend to think that these plants either can eat larger things than they can or that, uh, that if you were to touch one of these, that it's going to hurt you in some way. Uh, first of all, the ones that move have no really rigid parts that could hurt you, even prick your finger or anything. They can't draw blood. Um, and the idea of something that's large enough to eat a human is just, you know, that's unrealistic. But there are carnivorous plants that are large enough to eat things bigger than insects. And eating things like um, lizards and frogs and even small mammals is documented scientifically. We have the North American pitcher plant. Uh, we have sundews and we have butterworts and we have bladderworts. Those are our, our Texas natives. We live in Texas. We have lots of bugs. <laughs> so no, we do not feed our, our plants. Uh, inside, if you happen to have the perfect home with no bugs, yes, you might need to give them a few bugs. Um, but it's not like they need breakfast, lunch, and dinner or they're gonna die. If they get a few bugs a week, that's like eating Thanksgiving dinner. That's plenty. Um, full bugs a month is great. That's perfect, um, but even a couple bugs a year, they're going to be okay. They do photosynthesize. They are plants. So it's kind of like um, a balanced diet. You can live on soda pop and chips. You just won't be very healthy. You might not live as long. And it's the same with these. They, they can live on the sunlight and water and not be as strong as they could. Their full balanced diet would include bugs. Um, they're not as easy to grow as most people think, and I, I think that's a big misconception there. That because these look exotic and they have that u unique nature to them, being able to catch their own food, that they must be very difficult to grow, very exotic, and that's certainly not the case. Uh, as Stephanie said, we have four major types of carnivorous plants right here in Texas that grow in the wild. We have about 10,000 plants here of, of different sorts from all over the world, but um, I'd say 95% of our business is internet and mail order based. Uh, even people that are local often just order things online because it's cheaper than the gas it takes to get here. But by the same token, we're happy to have people come by anytime we happen to be here. Um, we don't have an actual storefront, so we ask for people to call us and make an appointment, but we've had people come by at 8 or 9 o'clock at night. As long as we're here, we're, we're happy to help people out. So we, we love the plants and we love to educate people, and the business allows us to do that.